Hello guys and welcome back to another dose. Today's video will be about how in just 60 days and from 20 to 60 words per minute in the Russian Yutsukin layout as well as from 60 to 110 in the English QWERTY layout. I log my progress using 10 fast fingers. English 60 second top 200 words test and I practiced each layout about 30 to 60 minutes every day but hopefully the advice I give in this video will help you improve even faster. One word is basically five characters and the spacebar counts as a character. Chapter 1 Self-Reflection What I recommend you start with is recording yourself. Look at how you're typing, be your own teacher. I personally was really not using my pinky fingers at all and this was a huge disadvantage because I actually had the muscle strength, I played the piano. I could also see that certain fingers like my middle finger would not stick to the correct column which slowed me down. And it also made it more difficult to find the right key without looking. And seeing how I was typing in Russian in the beginning is a whole nother story, there I was just so slow. Those were snail speeds, because I would even have to stop, as you can see, and think about where keys were. And I would keep hitting the wrong keys because I wouldn't have proper finger positioning either. This is why the next chapter is finger positioning. And what's actually super interesting is that I've not only become faster at typing on a physical keyboard, but also on a touch screen on my phone. I've become like twice as fast, even more, as you can see. And uh, typing on a touch screen is a good tip in and of itself to learn a layout, be it Colmac, Dvorak, or a layout in a whole another language. And although you can use a touch screen to practice a layout, you should use a physical keyboard to practice finger positioning. Which brings us to. Chapter 2. Finger Positioning and Technique Good finger positioning is the basis of touch typing, which is typing without looking at your keyboard. You're using your sense of touch. It doesn't just let you type faster for a longer period of time using less energy, but it also lets you learn the relative position of keys using finger association, as I will get into. Now, there are some guidelines on how you can sit and place your hands, but we all have different preferences as to keyboard tilt, wrist rests or no wrist rests, how we hold our hands. Now pay attention to where my hands are hovering when I'm typing. This is basically the home row method. I'm sticking to these two lines and my hands are not moving around too much. Now the question is, how do we get there? Glad you asked. Go to a page like touchtyping.guru. The mental exercise I want you to do here is to associate the finger you are instructed to use with the letter you get. Like here for example I'm associating the letter C with my left middle finger and what's left to decide is just which row it is on. And then you can move from the home row to the row you need to be on. And I know it's on the lower row because you have control Z, X, C, V that you use all the time when editing documents. And then the index finger for R, where's R? Well, you know, it's the QWERTY layout, so it's the upper row. Then you have your ring finger for O, O, and you get the ID, you just continue. And this finger association technique is basically how I learned to type in Russian on my Norwegian keyboard with Norwegian keycaps. I actually remember how I was practicing recalling the keys by heart like this on purpose game, so you can do that as well. But in the beginning I didn't know the position of keys by heart, so I had to use an on-screen keyboard to keep track of the keys. But after a few weeks I was able to actually recall keys from my memory. Doing this you can read each letter out loud. At this point, just focus on accuracy and using the correct finger. Don't worry about the speed. You can even try keeping a constant speed, like a metronome. Now, touch typing basically means you use touch and not vision to locate keys. So think about what you can feel. You can feel the J and F keys as I described, with the bumps on them, you can feel the spacebar, shift, caps lock, modifier keys, and the edge of the keyboard. 
and not feel overwhelmed, especially in the beginning, you can practice one row at a time. OnlineTyping.org is a good page for this. And having practiced this finger positioning myself, I do realize why some people prefer to not use their pinky fingers at all, because you then have to use the opposite hand for using the shift key. But the reason I learned to use my pinky finger properly is because in Norwegian and German you have these extra letters that are frequently used, so it just makes typing a lot more effortless. Now, just as you can practice each row separately, you can practice each hand separately. Has it crossed your mind how many words, in the English language at least, it is that you type exclusively with your left hand as compared to your right hand? And doing this has also helped me to learn to not cross the midline of the keyboard, except for the letter B, which is in the middle. Another page I recommend you to use when you learn finger positioning is kbr.com. Here, just focus on accuracy, because at least in the beginning, you don't get overwhelmed with a lot of letters. You get just some letters, so, so here you can practice just a select few letters in different combinations. And what's great is that you're fed letters and combinations of letters based on how fast you're typing each letter. And what you can see I'm doing here is actually treating one word as one chord. And if you know specifically what letters and combinations of letters or rows you want to practice, you can use this page here. Chapter 3, Speed and Accuracy. What I want you to start with here is to learn to see one word as one chord. You can split larger ones up in multiple chords, but basically you think of one word as one unit, like a chord on a piano. As you get better, you can split it up. She. Once you get faster, you should actually also practice reading the word ahead. So when I'm typing after, I'm reading while. I also recommend you practice with different keyboards. Any keyboard, the keyboard in the library, your grandma's keyboard, your friend's keyboard. Because keyboards are different. Different keyboards have different travel. And I've found the lesser the travel, the faster I'm able to type. That's why I'm actually able to type quite fast on my laptop keyboard. Key rollover is another important property of keyboards. On my external keyboard I can only press 6 keys at a time, while on my laptop I can press 8 keys at the same time. Mechanical keyboards can actually also have pre-travel, which means they are registered before they bottom out. But, the reason I'm typing so fast here at 144 words per minute is that this is a 15 second test. I'm not able to uphold such a high VPM count on a 30 or 60 second test. And you can also gamify the experience by using a page like nitrotype.com. Here you're getting excerpts that you have to type out and you can only use enter once to skip a word, which means that accuracy is just as important as raw speed to achieve a higher VPM count. Now, you can see I am somewhat slower at like 105 words per minute, and the reason is that it is with punctuation and capital letters, so this does slow you down, actually. Another similar page is play.typeracer.com. The reason this page might be slightly better is that it seems like you more often get to race against other actual people and not just bots like in Nitrotype. Here you also get these excerpts, and here you don't get to skip any word at all. So you have to go back and redo them, and you can use Control backspace to delete a whole word. And at this point you're playing a game, so enjoy it, have fun, maybe put on some music to relax, and see if that helps you. Okay, almost a hundred. Monkeytype.com has some great modes for practicing speed and accuracy. First of all, you can try using different difficulties of the... And you can see I'm struggling a lot. My words per minute count is low. But it's a great way to practice combinations of letters that are not in your muscle memory, but aren't complete gibberish either. And once you've done a typing test in monkey type, you can choose the practice words mode. So let's go for both here. 
Words I personally am struggling a lot more with are those with combinations of letters that are close to each other. The goal of the QWERTY layout was seemingly to place commonly used letters as far away from each other as possible. Now, another way you can improve your speed is to use the paste carrot mode in monkey type. So you go to paste carrot mode and then choose custom and type in a words per minute count that is slightly above what you're currently at. So here I chose 122 and you can see I'm sort of struggling to keep up that pace, but, but in the long run it helps motivate you to keep up a higher speed. And as you get better, you can slightly increase the speed of this pacer. Chapter 4, Typing in Different Languages Some languages are easier to type in, others are more difficult to type in. What really slows me down in Latvian is that in order to get the diacritics A, E, I, O, U, you actually have to press the right Alt key, also known as Alt GR. And to get the regular letters, you actually have to release the key. Whoa, 52 words per minute is the top 1% on 10 fast fingers for Latvian. E italiano mi molto piace la lingua italiana. And here we have the same issue as in Norwegian. You have these extra letters to keep track of with your right pinky finger. What's interesting is that German is actually a quartz layout and not a qwerty layout, as opposed to Norwegian, for example. And you can also use a page like Lyrics Training to practice keeping up with the singer's voice. Try Eminem Rap God, for example. Now let's finish up this video with some final words of advice. You might feel like you're not making progress, even though you actually are. Just improving your accuracy is progress in and of itself. And here, for example, I went from 23 words per minute to 31 in just one day. And this happened when I was actually switching to another keyboard, a smaller keyboard that was more difficult to type on, turning on some music, relaxing. And when I went back to my favorite keyboard, I suddenly was able to use the muscle memory I had worked up. And basically, type much faster and more effortlessly.